The main pump of the excavator is an oil pump in the form of plunger, which is an energy conversion device. It converts the mechanical energy from the engine flywheel into hydraulic energy, provides the hydraulic oil with the required flow for the hydraulic system. It is the power source of the whole hydraulic system. In fact, the principle of plunger pump is not complex. Such examples can be found everywhere in life. For example, a syringe for injection. The piston moves back and forth in the cylinder block to continuously absorb and discharge oil. The amount of oil discharged by the main pump depends on the length of piston stroke. Kawasaki K3 V112 main pump is equipped on Cinemac 21 to 25 ton excavators. Now let's have a look at its structure. The main pump is composed of two variable displacement piston pumps and a gear pump in series. The plunger pump close to the engine is called the front pump, also known as P1 pump. The plunger pump away from the engine is called the rear pump, also known as P2 pump. The structure of the front and the rear pumps are almost the same, and the gear pump is the pilot pump, also known as P3 pump. Since P1 pump is almost the same as P2 pump, we only disassemble and introduce P1 pump today. Remove the end cover with an Allen key, check the oil seal and oiling, and also check the contact surface between the main shaft and the oil seal. Sometimes, the oil leakage of the main shaft is caused by the damage of the oil seal. Remove the fixing bolts of P1 pump to separate P1 pump from P2 pump. Remove the regulator assembly. This is the fork of the regulator, which changes the angle of the swash plate by means of the driving mechanism. Move the shift fork by hand to confirm whether the shift fork returns flexibly. This is the oil distribution plate of the main pump. Its function in the plunger pump is to distribute high and low pressure oil circuits. The oil distribution plate is fixed by a locating pin. When the main shaft rotates, it moves relative to the cylinder block. It should be noted that the design of the oil passage of the oil distribution plate of P1 pump and P2 pump is opposite. If something wrong with the installation, the main pump will not work properly. Check the wear of the contact surface between the oil distribution plate and the cylinder block, and check whether the oil hole is unobstructed. Take out the cylinder piston assembly. Take out the main shaft of the main pump. Remove the rear cover and the swash plate of the main pump. The swash plate is connected with the driving mechanism and it slides on the rear cover to change its angle. Let's have a look of the cylinder block piston assembly. This is the piston support. The nine holes on the support are used to fix the nine pistons. This is the plunger and the sliding shoe assembly. We need to check the contact surface between the sliding shoe 
and the plunger support for abnormal wheel. Also check whether the oil passage is normal. If there is a gap between the contact surface of the plunger support and the sliding shoe, it will lead to the leakage of hydraulic oil and the reduction of the flow of the main pump. In addition, we need to check whether there is a gap between the piston and the sleeper. We can pull with both hands to test whether there is a gap. If the clearance is obvious, a new set of plunger sliding shoe assembly must be replaced. If it is not replaced, even if you adjust the regulator to the maximum flow position, it will not reach the rated flow value. It means the action of the excavator working attachment will slow down. I'd like to share a failure analysis experience here. If the pump makes a rhythmic noise and the oil outlet pipe of the main pump shakes adversely, the reason for the fault is that the plunger is separated from the sliding shoe. The method to test the sealing performance of the plunger and the cylinder block is to check whether the contact surface between the plunger and the cylinder block is abnormally warm. Put the plunger into the cylinder block. Check and confirm whether the plunger can move smoothly in the cylinder block. And then shake the plunger to check whether the gap between the plunger and the cylinder block is abnormal. Take out all springs. Check and confirm whether the springs are broken and abnormal well. And check whether the lengths of all springs are the same. Check whether there is abnormal wear on the contact surface between the plunger support and the sliding shoe. If the wear is serious, it will lead to the leakage of high pressure oil. If necessary, replace the plunger support with a new one. Check whether the contact surface between the swash plate and the rear cover of the main pump is abnormally warm and whether the oil hole of the rear cover is unobstructed. Check and confirm that there is no wear on the surface of the set plate on the swash plate. Since the set plate and the sliding shoe are closely together, if there is abnormal wear, the sliding shoe will be damaged. There are all parts that were removed from the P1 plunger pump. Check and clean the plunger pump housing. Clean the plunger pump housing with high-pressure air. Clean all parts and prepare to assemble the main pump. Place the plunger pump housing flat and be careful not to forget to install the awning. Install the rear cover of the main pump. Tap the rear cover gently with a rubber hammer to make the rear cover installed in place. Apply some grease on the contact surface of swash plate and set plate to make it stick firmly. Turn the pin of the regulator drive mechanism to the upward position and prepare to install the swash plate. Put in the swash plate so that the hole of the swash plate is sleeved on the pin of the driving mechanism and test whether the swash plate can adjust the angle normally. Adjust the position of the plunger pump housing. Hold the swash plate with one hand so that it does not move and prepare to install the main shaft. Install the main shaft in the correct position. Continue to adjust the position of the pump housing so that the pump housing is at an angle to the ground and hold the swash plate with one hand. Two people are required to install the cylinder plunger assembly. One person holds the main shaft and then another person pushes the cylinder plunger assembly into the pump housing. Adjust the position of the two splines 
so that they are aligned. Slowly install the cylinder plunger assembly to the correct position with experience and hand feeling. Test and confirm that the swash plate works normally. Check the oil seal and o-ring of the end cover and prepare for installation. Apply a thin layer of sealant on the end cover and install it on the main shaft. Inspect the check valve on the connecting valve block between P1 pump and P2 pump and confirm that the steel ball in the check valve is intact. It should be noted that the check valve cannot be installed reversely. Check the oil distribution plate again. Apply some grease on the surface of the oil distribution plate. Align the locating pin and install the oil distribution plate. Install the P1 pump onto the connecting valve block and tighten the four fixing bolts. Check orange of the regulator. Align the fork of the regulator with the pin of the drive mechanism and install the regulator in the correct position. Rotate the main shaft with coupling or special tools to confirm whether the plunger pump is assembled correctly. If the main shaft cannot rotate or rotates too flexibly, it means that there is a problem in the assembly of the plunger pump, which needs to be disassembled for inspection and reassembled. Unscrew the plug, add hydraulic oil until the hydraulic oil overflows and tighten the plug. It should be noted that it is very important to add hydraulic oil to the main pump after the assembly of the main pump. Otherwise, the main pump is easy to be damaged.